Haunting Ground is a survival horror game released for the PlayStation 2 in 2005. It begins with the protagonist, Fiona Belly, waking up in a cage in the basement of a gothic castle. She quickly escapes her imprisonment and begins to explore the castle grounds. After coming across a couple of the strange inhabitants, she saves a white German shepherd named Huey, who later returns the favour and comes to her aid. Together, they search for a way out of this hell and escape their sinister hunters. Haunting Ground will take you through an impressive display of gothic environments, something you'll also need to pay attention to in order to survive. While Huey can help distract an enemy, it will only be for a period of time, as actually evading your pursuers will require you to hide behind doors, inside cupboards, and under beds. But even that doesn't guarantee they won't find you. When it comes to horror games, my mind wanders into the territory of horror films. I adore those kinds of movies, and I can't help but think about how the feelings of tension and fear are translated into games. When it came to Haunting Ground, it felt almost impossible for me not to think of the cinematic influences. There's no HUD or even loading screens, as if they intended for this experience to be as less gamey as they could possibly make it. The end of the intro trailer shows credits in the same style that a film trailer would, and the fixed cameras add a cinematic element, flicking between angles just like a movie. Its stylistic choices, gameplay, and use of camera all harken back to specific horror subgenres and in some cases even specific directors. It's a game that instantly became a favourite of mine, and it's one of those things where researching and writing about it makes me love it even more. Haunting Ground is a stellar example of the survival horror genre, and a game that I believe to be a masterpiece. The main subgenre of horror cinema I think of when it comes to the hide and seek gameplay of Haunting Ground is that of slashers. But what actually makes a slasher? While the exact definition varies among different people, it's generally considered that slasher films are a subgenre of horror involving a killer and a string of graphic murders of numerous victims who are usually teenagers. In Haunting Ground, we have potential killers, but we don't see a lot of victims. That is, unless you fail. The game is packed with violent, gruesome deaths if you make a mistake. Sure, it might be only one teenager, but fail enough and you get yourself a body count to rival that of a slasher movie. Unlike those kinds of films though, there was no satisfaction in watching Fiona, and by extension you, being crushed in a grinder and forced back to your last save. Every death in a slasher means progression, but every death in a survival horror game means you've taken a step backwards. The game over screen displays the words Acta est fabula, which translates to the play is over, a phrase commonly used to announce the ending of a dramatic performance in ancient Roman theatre. It's almost like another attempt to distance itself from the language typically associated with video games, and instead focuses on its theatrical nature more like a play or a film. But unlike either of those, our own involvement as a player is necessary, not just as a viewer. Upon deaths caused by your stalkers, you'll hear the aftermath of Fiona's murder. They are awful, visceral noises. Sounds of bones breaking, clothes ripping, and flesh being torn apart. They're disgusting and horrific, instilling the most discomfort I've ever been in while playing a game. But the implications of what is happening to Fiona are much, much worse. There are camera angles placed outside of windows, making you feel you're being watched, and enhances the feeling of being preyed upon. This makes a lot of sense given that one of the antagonists, Lorenzo, is spying on you throughout the game. Some encounters with enemies are scripted, whereas others are different each playthrough thanks to the use of AI. This ensures repeat playthroughs of the game are just as tense as the first. Haunting Ground follows the same guidelines as a slasher, you're stalked and forced into hiding rather than attacking front on with weapons and engaging in physical combat. You'll need to use wit in order to evade death. If you're familiar with slashes, you'll know of those moments where a character will somehow fall over at the worst possible time when being chased by a killer. Well, Haunting Ground has a mechanic for that. 
Just like the Clock Tower series, the game has a panic system, whereby if Fiona is scared by witnessing a dead body or is attacked or chased for too long, the screen will become a dizzying, pulsating, and desaturated mess of motion blur effects and lack of control. Fiona's unstable movement will make her prone to crashing into walls or falling over, so it's much easier for her pursuer to catch her. This stalker-type gameplay makes for a fantastic adaptation of the slasher genre, but there is another kind of film that I want to talk about. The slasher film is not too far from a giallo. Italian gialli films are generally characterised as gruesome murder mystery thrillers, that combine the suspense elements of detective fiction with scenes of shocking horror, featuring excessive bloodletting, stylish camera work, and often jarring musical arrangements. They also feature elements of eroticism and psychological horror, and the giallo is considered a predecessor to, and large influence on, the later American slasher film genre. In fact, John Carpenter's Halloween was fundamentally inspired by the genre, and in particular the work of Italian director Dario Argento, with his movie Deep Red being a significant influence. While Argento made several iconic giallo films, that wasn't all he focused on. A giallo is more of a whodunit, a murder mystery involving the characters unravelling the identity and motive of a serial killer. This isn't the same as some of his other films like Suspiria, which most people see as more of a supernatural horror movie, rather than what is typically considered a giallo. Visually, they aren't very different, but the content changes slightly. Regardless, the work of Argento frequently depicts women in horrific circumstances. They are sometimes the protagonists of his films, but they also make up for the majority of victims. His movies are filled with strikingly beautiful shots, even when something horrible is happening on screen. Although not the first to employ any of these techniques, Argento's films often use a brighter colour palette in comparison to most horror or darker themed films. You'll notice unnatural lighting with blues and reds, and also POV shots featured throughout his work, all of which can be found in Haunting Ground. The game is thematically very similar to the work of Argento, whose Three Mothers trilogy involves alchemy and stylized architecture. You'll often find matching motifs, such as the use of dolls or even a killer wearing a long coat, black gloves, and a hat, like the mysterious figure we see near the start of the game. In addition to this, Argento's Inferno features gothic settings in modern times, not much different from Belly Castle's existence in a contemporary period with cars and televisions. There's a great element of surrealism and absurdity when it comes to the stories of Gialli, with heavily orchestrated scenarios and killings that aren't far from the possible scenes you may find in Haunting Ground. I mean, Ricardo made a whole fake statue of a pregnant Fiona to freak her out, so talk about dramatic. Haunting Ground is often described as a spiritual successor to the Clock Tower series, due to its similarities in gameplay and the fact that a lot of the team members who worked on Clock Tower 3 also developed Haunting Ground. This is interesting when it comes to the discussion of the possible influence of Dario Argento, as Hifumi Kono, the creator of Clock Tower, directly cites his films, and in particular Phenomena, as the inspiration for the first Clock Tower game. It's not exactly subtle either, as both the main characters of the film and the game are named Jennifer, and have a striking resemblance in appearance. The first murder weapon of Phenomena is a pair of scissors, and the killer in Clock Tower is literally called Scissor Man, so you can probably guess what he uses to kill his victims. While Hifumi Kono did not work on Haunting Ground or the later installments in the Clock Tower series after the second game, Dario Argento's contributions to Giallo and Italian horror served as the basis for the first game, and considering Haunting Ground seems to be heavily inspired by the series, perhaps me recognising the similarities isn't surprising. It almost makes me think that the development team for Haunting Ground looked back at the origins of Clock Tower, and used that as the foundation for their work. Although many of the most popular Italian horror films were set outside of Italy, Haunting Ground seems to be set somewhere in Europe, judging by the gothic, neo-medieval architecture of Belly Castle, with its stained glass windows, arches, carvings, and high ceilings. There's also a majority of Latin and Italian names, 
including Debilitas, Lorenzo, Ricardo, and the family name Belli, which is apparently an Italian surname of medieval origin. So perhaps this is another reference to Italian horror cinema, if only in terms of the country it came from. In Haunting Ground, there's a cast of characters all with their own reasons for hunting you down in hopes to take the Azoth, which is essentially a kind of life force that the game implies is in Fiona's womb. Daniela, the castle's housemaid, wishes to take it from her as she feels incomplete. She remarks that she cannot feel any sensations such as taste, pain, or pleasure, as well as suffering from infertility. All of this results in her intense jealousy of Fiona, which especially extends to experiencing physical intimacy, and her lesser role as a housemaid. You lure the man into your filthy body again and again, and you are allowed to do that because you are Little Daniela suffers abuse at the hands of Ricardo, which is highlighted by one of the game's optional cutscenes, and her uncomfortability with her own body and self is presented through her hatred of mirrors, something which you can use to your advantage to escape. Due to her overwhelming feelings of self-hatred, Daniela completely breaks down, intent on taking Fiona's womb and believing the Azoth will fix her. But unlike Daniela, Ricardo and Lorenzo aren't pitiable by any means. Lorenzo, Ricardo, and Fiona's father Ugo all belong to a long line of clones originating from Aureolus Belli, an alchemist from the Middle Ages. With these clones, he was able to pass down his Azoth from generation to generation, achieving a form of immortality as they search for the Great Truth, which is suggested to be some kind of alchemical pursuit of ultimate knowledge. Lorenzo created Ugo, but he left the castle in order to live a peaceful and normal life with Fiona's mother Ayla. In response to this, Lorenzo made Ricardo, but only Ugo possesses the Azoth. This prompts Ricardo to kill him in order to take it from him, as without it he is an incomplete clone. However, after examining the car, he realises Fiona has inherited the Azoth from her father. With this, he comes up with the idea of impregnating her and becoming reborn as a complete being, which is even more messed up considering he could technically be seen as her uncle. His desire is to be the original, and start a line of Ricardo clones, as opposed to Aureolus ones. Lorenzo instead wishes to continue the Aureolus bloodline, so similarly wants to use Fiona's Azoth for his own gain. As such, he helps her escape from Ricardo, but is also a massive creep who watches her get dressed, and spies on her throughout her journey. All of the residents of Belly Castle desire the Azoth, except for one, Debilitas. Debilitas is a failed experiment who works as the groundskeeper, and contrary to the others, he doesn't seem to have any malicious intent. He possesses a childlike mind and loves to play with dolls, and upon seeing Fiona for the first time, it's suggested he thinks she's a large toy. When you fight Debilitas in his boss battle, you have the option of killing him, or dropping a chandelier on top of him which allows him to survive, and if you choose the latter, he is grateful towards Fiona and will treat her with respect from here on out. Overall, the antagonists of Haunting Ground are varied and unsettling. Their unrelenting nature and overwhelming desire to violate Fiona's body in one way or another provides a horrific kind of body horror not far from the themes of Silent Hill 3 in that a young woman must fight through hell in the hopes of gaining control over her own body. Haunting Ground doesn't shy away from or obscure its darkest subjects, making it a deeply disturbing and shocking experience at times. Fiona's sexualization through her outfit makes sense given that she is not the one who chose it. It was given to her by Lorenzo, who subsequently watches her through a peephole like the predator that he is. Although I will admit the jiggle physics were over the top and just ended up being more comical than anything. That being said, there is a very dramatic element of eroticism that can be found in slasher and giallo films, but you're only subjected to that for maybe one or two scenes, and not the entire experience. This of course isn't detrimental to enjoying what Haunting Ground has to offer, and it became unnoticeable for me fairly quickly. 
At the end of the day, you sympathise with Fiona's situation and feel uncomfortable alongside her. She's a courageous young woman who refuses to give up and against all odds escapes Belly Castle. In the good endings, of course. Haunting Ground is fantastic and a wonderfully successful adaptation of the slasher giallo genre. It utilises extreme drama, violent death scenes and high tensions through its storytelling, gameplay and visual elements. It builds upon and perfects the Clock Tower formula, creating an even truer vision of a Dario Argento-inspired video game. The small details of lingering shots and the way the camera takes a second to zoom out when entering a new room adds another layer of suspense. And it was little choices like these that I really appreciated. Haunting Ground is a game that I wish could be experienced by more people, but because of the lack of ports and ridiculously expensive physical copies, it's no surprise that not many people have the chance to play it. I really hope that one day it becomes available on modern platforms, because to me, it's Capcom's horror masterpiece that should never be forgotten. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.